Well, what's interesting and I see a lot in the comments is beta males always get upset when I use the term alpha male or talk about it and you see, oh, there's no such thing. And the reality is they're, they're getting tweaked by that. They're getting triggered in, in other words. And the reason they're tr triggered is they know that they're personally not showing up. And so the alpha male is a guy that shows up. He, you look, I always use the the Tom Brady analogy, and I, you know, I consider his wife Giselle. She's an alpha female. She was a mogul and a multi multi millionaire, one of the most su successful supermodels in the world at the time. I think she was even wealthier than Tom Brady was. And so they were both successful, both high achievers. They both take impeccable care of their body. They have high standards. They're high achievers. They, you know, they they make a great team. You know, all the video and the interviews I've seen, she's really incredible. She's like his biggest cheerleader and fan, and that's what you want in the woman that's that's with you on on that journey. And she embodies that. And guys that aren't living up to their full potential, they're not really striving to achieve the things that they want. They know that. And so when you talk, you know, the term alpha male is so triggering because deep down they know they're not doing what they should be doing to shape and change their destiny for the better. And they don't like to be reminded of it, and that's why they get so nasty because it's like, they, in essence, they want you to shut up and they want you to talk about something else because it makes them feel uncomfortable and it reminds them that there's stuff that they need to be taken care of that they're not, and they get hostile towards it because behind anger is always fear, and the deep-seated fear are two human fears, primary fears that all human beings have is Number one, fear that we won't be loved, accepted by our friends, family, and our peer group. Number two is that we don't fear that we don't have what it takes to succeed and accomplish the things that we want. And deep down, if they're fearful and they know they need to be doing more, but they're not and they're scared and they're fearful, they get angry. And that's why they lash out and they're nasty when I, I bring these these things up. And human beings always when when they're attacking another human being so it's like if you're a very happy joyful person and you're just in the grocery store having a good time and there's somebody in there that is just not a happy person they want to be happy but they're not happy and they see that you're happy it pisses them off they, because they again it. because you know the anger and the hostility and being pissed off at you for being happy comes from the fact that they're disconnected from happiness within themselves. And so behind the, you know, the anger is always the fear. In other words, fear that they're never going to be happy. They're not going to have what you have. And so they look at you and they're like, wow, that person's, she's a really happy person. She's smiling and she's friendly to everybody. And I wish my life was like that. And so that's why they tend to attack and belittle because if they can attack and belittle and label somebody that's showing up in a way that they want to, that they're not, then they don't feel bad. Then it justifies continuing to be mediocre and not do anything because you know she was a bitch or she was stuck up or she, you know she was an evil evil rich rich woman with too much privilege and born with a silver spoon in her mouth or wh whatever it happens to be they're projecting their insecurities yeah, exactly. but i think also um they might be lazy and they don't want to have to compete true you know like they don't want to have to put the work in, you know, that they're resentful that they have to work for it. Well, they believe in the, the instant gratification and, you know, especially when somebody tells them the reason that they're not successful is because the system is rigged against them in their favor. And so then that becomes justification for doing nothing. And the reality is you're the summation of the actions you take or that you fail to take. Because either way, when you take action, it's going to move you in a direction. And when you stop taking action or you avoid taking action, you don't move towards the things that you want. Most people are moving away for it, from it, what they want, because they're afraid that they don't have what it takes. And so they don't do anything to really risk finding out that they don't have what it takes. Kind of like what I did with calculus in college. I was afraid that I wasn't smart enough to pass it. So I avoided doing my homework. And I would avoid it so much that when you get several weeks in a semester, then you got to take a test, and then you try to cram. There's no way you can learn two and a half mm -hmm. weeks worth of calculus in one night before your test the next day. And then I go in and I fail a test the next day, and eventually have to you know drop the class, 
you know, before the, the drop date and, um, and then have to take it all over again, all because I was afraid that I wasn't smart enough. I didn't have what it takes. So mm-hmm. I, I literally did nothing. I found excuses. I watched TV. I went out with my friends. Uh, I read a book or I, I went to the gym or whatever. I just did something to distract myself and avoided finding out whether or not I had what it takes. Mm-hmm. And most people, I mean, people that don't achieve the things they want, the story keeps them stuck. It keeps them not taking action. I agree 100%. But the beta male, alpha male terms are also used frequently in the red pill community in these books. And if you're not familiar with the terminology, some people might just be thinking that that is a scientific thing like a pack mentality. There's an alpha of the pack. I think maybe they're looking at it from in the wrong way. The alpha takes action and rises to challenges. The beta does avoids action and shrinks from challenges. Okay. That's, that's the difference. That's okay. how I look at it. You either do what's necessary or you don't. You either man up or you bitch out. It's one or the other. Mm-hmm. Alpha mans up and does it, even when it looks hopeless, even when he's going to look stupid or silly or maybe get rejected publicly and everybody laughs at him or whatever. He doesn't care. He at least, as a man, a man shows up, It's like, especially if he sees an attractive woman and, she, and he wants to talk to her, maybe date her, he at least has to go and extend an invitation for a date or meeting for a drink or getting a number mm-hmm. or whatever. And even if he gets rejected, it, he did his part. He showed up as a man and went, he acted upon his intuition or the beauty that he saw and maybe she turned out to be married or had a boyfriend or whatever or just wasn't interested. She feels better. He feels better for the attempt, even though he failed because he did something in a very public way because other people were like, damn, that dude had balls. He went right up to that chick and asked for a number and got shot down. And he still walked away with a smile on his face and they both walked away laughing and she was blushing. And so she feels good the whole rest of the day. And probably goes home and fucks the shit out of her boyfriend or husband because she felt beautiful and is probably thinking about that guy a little bit as she's fucking her man. So you're in the opinion that alphas can be made, that you don't have to be born an alpha. And I think that's where the confusion happens. I think some people think people are born alphas and maybe they're resentful if they're not that way. They can't be that way. Well, you can choose to take action. You can choose to get better. Mm -hmm. You can choose to develop yourself. I mean, Mm -hmm. some people are, it's innate. It's their natural born leaders, just like there are people that are naturally born gifted at playing the piano or writing music or Mm -hmm. being an architect or, or being a writer. It's like we all have gifts and skills and talents and things that are innate to us and but in order to master them we've got to work at them and through trial and error and repetition to get better yeah i think that alpha males in that if you look at it like that it's not just like a innate thing that you're born with if you want to be like that, you can be anything you want to be. I mean, Rillo talks about that in his book, how it's about unplugging from the matrix and becoming the alpha. So it, it, the way he says it, says it is that you don't have to be born an alpha. You can become that. So it's similar to what you just said. And it, you have so much to gain by bettering yourself instead of just feeling like you were born defeated. You know, that's weak. You know. Well, again, it becomes your, your story. Your story is you're defeated. Mm-hmm. You don't have what it takes. You don't have the education. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough time. You got to get your knee fixed. You got to mow your lawn, sell your jet skis, clean out your garage. There's always something that gets in the way. Like my old business partner, James, was like that. He had his music career that he wanted to do, and he had the ability to do that the latter part of his life. And yet he constantly made excuses and kind of ran away from his career because deep down he did. He was like, oh, I'm too old. I don't have it anymore. And or it'll, he'll just never get back to the level that he had before. And he constantly shrank from those things and avoided every time I talked to him. He'd be like, oh, I got to do this. I got to sell that. I got to you know talk to this guy. I got to go collect money from this other guy or rent from this tenant. Or there was always something that mm-hmm. constantly he was always in the process I, you know, I always just to tease on it's like he was always getting ready to get ready 
but not really taking action and not really moving his life forward. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because he, in essence, died with his music still in him. And most people will never know who he was. Yeah. We'll never hear his music. 